Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. This show is dedicated to showing you the best of our state. We're highlighting the best in your friends, your neighbors, and even strangers who are coming together for Colorado. These positive and inspiring stories are happening all around you. We just have to open our eyes to them. So grab the kiddos, sit back and relax, and enjoy the good that's happening right next door. For children fighting serious illnesses, sometimes it's hard to get their minds off being sick. But there's a group coming together for Colorado and providing them the perfect distraction. Karen Morfitt shows us their labor of love. For many of these kids, their lives are focused on hospital visits. Perfect. But today, the focus is a photo shoot. It's a great way to celebrate how far she and us as a family have come since her diagnosis and treatment. How one group is turning these kids' trials into smiles. That's next on Together. Severe weather is destructive. It can also be really scary, especially for pets. Well, during hailstorms this week, a dog in Westminster ran away from home. But thanks to people who came together for Colorado, there was a special reunion, as Jamie Leary explains. But never have we seen something like this, ever. <laughs> Tammy Backus screamed in horror as her dog Angel jumped from a two-story balcony during the storm. Like the fact that she was still able to run, she jumped from so high, so high. That's where Will Hastings comes in. That's the man who How helped you. you. <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> How he used the power of social media to bring Angel home. That's later on Together. Well, one woman's near-death experience has sparked the start of an important family tradition. For the first time, her 16-year-old son was able to take part. Joel Hillen was there as he gave the gift of life in his first-ever blood donation. Blood transfusions saved Kristen Belmonte's life. It's 42 people donated blood to save my life. Her son grew up knowing how important blood donations are. I've just wanted to do it ever since I turned 16. And on this day, he finally got the chance to donate. It'll help somebody out somewhere, so if you can, just do it. How this family tradition will be carried on for years to come. That's coming up on Together. We're going to have more on those stories coming up in just a moment. First, I want to tell you about some Coloradans who are coming together to protect our police officers. Community members raised more than $17,000 to get them new gear to help keep them safe. Sean Chitness and photojournalist Rob McClure were there as the two departments received the generous gift. Would you guys give these guys another round of applause? Cops should be safe because they're the ones that protect you. It's a simple mission helping police departments across the country. Whatever our police officers come up against, whatever threat that is, we want to make sure that they're protected while they're trying to protect us. These kits include vests with plates and helmets. Now in the hands of 20 officers from Monument and Palmer Lake. We needed to have uh, a part in helping them get some extra funding to get the gear that we felt they needed. Just some of the more than 1,800 donated across 15 states by the nonprofit Shield 616. We both feel that officers should come home safe and not harmed. The money from these kids came from members of Living Word Chapel and fundraising led by these two boys. To have a stranger do that for you, it's just something, it's almost undescribable. But they weren't strangers for long. Those donating and receiving put a face to the name building a stronger bond over the shared cause of protecting each other. If there aren't any cops, then you aren't safe, and then you can't play at school. Okay, we love the story so much. We invited Sean Chinnis to sit down with us for a minute, talk a little bit more about it. We especially love those young boys in there. And so tell us a little bit more about them. We know that they led the charge in all of this, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they're very impressive. So Andrew going into fifth grade this year, Caleb going into fourth grade, they basically learned about this through their parents and said, you know what, to me it feels like everyone should be able to go home to their families. And so mm -hmm. that's why this mission is so important. So bake sales, knocking on doors, asking businesses for help. They did whatever they could. All together, raised almost $14,000. That's 10 vests for different police departments. And they seem so modest about it, don't they? Yeah, you know, they said, hey, we want to have fun at school. 
And we know that by helping these police departments, that's going to allow us to be safe at school. Let's talk a little bit more about SHIELD 616. Um, to give me some more information about that program as well. So really impressive, this campaign that has started here in Colorado, now in 15 different states, and they are helping police departments and sheriff's offices across the country. So this last one that we just saw, 20 different vest kits being given awesome. to those police departments. Coming up now, they're going to have 100 kits that they're giving to the sheriff's department in Adams County. This is so great. It just keeps growing, doesn't it? Quickly, how can people help out with this organization? If they saw the story, they want to get involved with it, what do they do? So two ways. Of course, you can make a financial donation, or if you just know another department that could use this type of service, contact the agency. We have all that information on cbsdenver.com, and they'll get you going on that effort. And I had no idea it started right here. That's beautiful. All right, Sean, thanks for being yeah, with us. Yeah, of course. We appreciate it. Well, in Arvada, fitness instructors being recognized for helping Coloradans stay fit and healthy. Margaret Askew was just named the Silver Sneakers Instructor of the Year. She was picked from 600 instructors nationwide for her passion and her positive outlook on life. Agnew says she can't take all the credit. She wants to shine the light on her students. She says they keep her strong. They, they motivate me. They tell me their success stories, how they feel, and the things that in their lives that they can see improvement on, and that just makes me feel good. Agnew has been a fitness instructor now for 34 years. Well, our Together for Colorado stories showcase the encouraging and inspiring stories that make Colorado not just a great place to live, but a better place to live. Take this story, for example. A group of volunteers is spending time with kids battling serious health issues. They're helping the children forget they're sick by transforming them into the superheroes and princesses they dream of becoming, and they are already that they have inside of them. Karen Morfitt and photojournalist Robert Gaidecki show us their labor of love. The costumes are really just one piece of this transformation for many of the kids and their families. Seeing themselves as superheroes or little princesses can be a reminder of their own strength. There we go, right there. Perfect. <gasps> For the families who find themselves the focus of this camera lens, the hotel hallway they're standing in... Do you like the Batmobile? ...isn't really a hallway at all. You're actually going to be flying. For the Sudabic family from Littleton, it's a scene from Peter Pan with one-year-old Izzy as Tinkerbell. In a few days, it will be a year since she was first diagnosed with leukemia. The Amos family transformed into the Justice League with nine-year-old Jacoby as Batman. We actually haven't... Uh, Thought about blood sugars in the last 45 minutes. Another took a trip to outer space. Perfect. For these families and hundreds of others, one hour of make-believe can erase months of painful memories. We wanted to give them an opportunity to just be a kid. They can just have fun and not think about chemo. They not think about hospital visits. Good job. Photographer Kylie Cole started Capes and Crowns with a team of volunteers. For the last three years, they've been giving families more than just a break from treatment. Having those pictures on the wall, it, they could resonate with that and see, I'm strong, I can beat this. Through the magic of editing, their finished photos are not only a dream come true for children battling a range of health issues. He's the toughest kid ever. They're a daily reminder to keep fighting. Way tougher than Batman. <laughs> are you? Yeah. Capes and Crowns photo shoots are made possible by donations. If this story touched your heart, you'll find a link to that organization at CBSDenver.com. Well, everyone has a chance to come together for Colorado, including our own Chris Spears. The big role he played in reuniting a lost dog with her family. We live in a pretty cool community. Yeah, <laughs> we found that out last week. For sure, I mean, everybody here. This week, severe storms brought down golf ball-sized hail all across the Front Range. It caused widespread damage to cars and rooftops. It also scared one dog that we know of who ended up running away from his home in Westminster. But thanks to people coming together for Colorado, that pup made it back to his family. Jamie Leary and photojournalist Dale Atchison show us how Colorado's dog-loving community made this special reunion happen. Hey. There is our hero. Will Hastings is one of a few heroes in this story. It's thanks to his persistence that Angel, a year old yellow lab, is now back with her family. It's a man who How's it going? You? 
Remember me? Tammy and Gary Backus never imagined a storm that could cause their dog such trauma. But Monday night? Never have we seen something like this, ever. The couple was documenting the hail from their second story balcony when a terrified angel took a flying leap. <laughs> and she jumped from so high. That's where Will comes in. He was out taking photos of the storm with his girlfriend when he spotted her. I could tell when she was sitting there that she was like, just beat. He took this video, his girlfriend trying in vain to coax the scared pup. Trying to get this poor dog. Will decided to tweet the video, hoping that somebody would see. But his account only has 56 followers. So I was trying to think, who do I know that has the furthest reach? I took a class with Chris Spears last semester. Our very own meteorologist Chris Spears tweeted to his nearly 8,000 followers. The tweet reached Tammy's neighbor, who ran uh, to show her. I was just in shock that tweets that I'd know nothing really about were already going everywhere. It took about 45 minutes, but Will eventually coaxed Angel into their car and met the Bacchuses. Angel was okay, and Tammy? Thankful that she was alive and that somebody picked her up. Happy to help. Oh, we love it when good things happen out of terrible storms like that, don't we? I know, and next time there is a big thunderstorm, no, your dogs really hate it, so snuggle up with them or let them go in the closet so yeah. they don't have any accidents. Yeah, they often run to the closet first, don't Yes, they? exactly. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about some of the great pictures. I know we have a lot of people sending them in, and we love to see them, and uh, they send them all to you, so share some of them. Well, before we had the storms, we had some really nice weather, so we have a lot of pictures of people out and about hiking, which we know is so popular here in uh, the summertime. So this is Lucy Lou enjoying Trail Ridge Road. Look on happy she looks there and just a beautiful day as well. Have you ever been up on Trail Ridge Road? I have not. Me either, so this makes me want to go. Maybe should take a road trip, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so great picture from Lucy Lou. And here are Todd Madison and Jordan Ermintrout. They made it to the top of Mount Belford. And I can't believe these little girls made that because hiking to 14er is no joke. I know, and look at their smiles. That's just great. And they had fun doing it, which is the way, why you should get out and do it anyway, right? Exactly. And Dad's like, yes, we did this, <laughs> and everyone made it. <laughs> All right, get down safely. Exactly. And this is me with my friends, Effie and Demetra. We hiked Mount Sinitas uh, last, or two weekends ago. Ago. We had so much fun. It was so sunny and beautiful, and the place was packed with lots of great people. So we had a wonderful time. So if you're out and about hiking, yeah. uh, make sure that you uh, send us your pictures because we'd love to see how all the beautiful scenery and all your friends enjoying a great time. For sure. And a quick tip on hiking. What do you have to take with you that you know of? Well, uh, I was a, the beginner novice, so a good pair of shoes, which I learned I did not have the greatest pair of shoes. Right. And uh, they both had camelbacks, and uh, you need lots of water. And I was the... the uh, one who was you're not borrowing. prepared. Yes, I was borrowing from the friends. That's yes. great, though. This is awesome mm. that you're getting out and enjoying it. Yeah. Lauren, thanks for sharing that with mm. us. And as always, always send your pictures to us, and we'll make sure that we share them here mm. on the show. Thanks, Lauren. Well, Chad with a vision makes his dream a reality. Seb was only 11 years old when he came up with the idea for Seb's Rec Center. Sadly, Seb passed away this week. Well, coming up next on Together, a tribute to the teen who made a lasting impression on everyone that he met. On this week's Together for Colorado Calendar, on Monday, enjoy a free evening at Lakeside Amusement Park for Ride with Care. The event is meant to teach kids about the dangers of distracted driving, while also giving them a chance to have some fun. On Wednesday, ditch the car for Bike to Work Day. If you register to ride, you'll be eligible to win some great prizes. On Friday, it's the Faces of Freedom Tournament in Bennett. Money raised goes directly toward getting veterans service dogs. You can find more information on these and other events on the Together for Colorado page at cbsdenver.com. Well, tonight we want to take a moment to remember a remarkable teen who spent his short life helping other children living with disabilities. Sebian Holiday passed away this week at the age of 16. Holiday battled a muscular disease and had very little command of his body. Doctors told his family he would not live past the age of nine. Not only did he overcome that expectation, he left behind a lasting legacy with Seb's Rec Center. It's a place that anyone can go and do the same activities without feeling different. The Rec Center opened in Aurora back in January. will always be a place where Seb's spirit can live on. A Littleton mother is instilling an important lesson in her children. She's teaching them what it means to give back. Kristen Belmonte had to receive two life-saving blood transfusions during two of her pregnancies. So she's made donating blood a family tradition. Joel Hillen and photojournalist Robert Sanchez introduce us to the newest family member that's taking part. 16-year-old Sam Belmonte couldn't wait to be old enough to donate blood. 
My mom was a blood recipient when I was younger, and I've just wanted to do it ever since I turned 16. Sam's mother, Kristen, suffered an amniotic fluid embolism during her second pregnancy. I have about 48 hours of memory loss, so I remember um, my water breaking at home, and then I woke up in the hospital two days later, and I, I asked my husband, why are all these people in my bedroom? 80% of women who suffer this type of embolism die. It was to the point where the, the surgeon in the emergency room gave my husband my wedding ring and said, you know, she's not gonna, probably not going to make it, you know, prepare for the worst. A series of blood transfusions would save Kristen's life. Because someone made a, took an hour out of their day to donate blood, um, it's a selfless gift that you give to someone. Um, that can save their life. The Belmonte family hosted annual blood drives in their home for eight years. This spring, Sam helped organize a blood drive at his school, the Evelyn. Just donate blood if you can. Um, it'll help somebody out somewhere. Someone like his mom. Uh, because I'm living proof that donating blood saves lives. There's no substitute for blood. Um, there's no generic brand or synthetic version. I mean, it has to come from humans and it's um, there's a constant need for it. That's beautiful. Well, volunteers are the perfect example of people who come together for Colorado every day. They help make our communities even stronger. How two very special volunteers in Aurora are being honored and remembered. That's coming up next on Together. Catch the latest episodes of Together as well as your favorite Together for Colorado stories anytime at CBSDenver.com. Our Together for Colorado stories demonstrate how people in Colorado are working together to make our communities even stronger. And there's no better example of that than taking a look at our police and deputies, those that put their lives on the line for ours. We want to say thanks to Jefferson County Deputy John Butler. He retired this week after 22 years of service. During his long career, he did just about everything from investigations to traffic enforcement. But one of his biggest roles was as an instructor training the next generation of deputies. So congratulations to Deputy Butler on his retirement. And one family in Fort Collins wanted to make sure that officers know how much they matter. These siblings stopped by the department with a handwritten note and some donuts. Lily and Austin called the officers their heroes, made sure that everyone got the chance to enjoy some of those sweet treats and read those sweet notes. And Aurora, longtime police department volunteers are being celebrated for their service. This week, a park bench was dedicated in honor of Tim and Marsha Todd. Tim passed away last year, but Marsha was on hand for that dedication. APD wanted to thank them for their devotion to the department and to the entire community. And you can find that bench and enjoy it near the fountains at City Center Park. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the time that you've spent watching together. We'll see you back here next week as we share even more encouraging stories that are happening all around you. And if you have a story idea, send it my way. I look forward to hearing from you and sharing the lovely people in your life. Until then, we hop on a roller coaster ride at Elitch Gardens as showcased by photojournalist Robert Sanchez. So buckle up.